This is Matthew Cratters, Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about how Bitcoin nodes come first, not Bitcoin miners. Bitcoin nodes are just people who run software, whether Bitcoin Knots or Bitcoin Core, people who run software on their computers that enforce the rules of Bitcoin and allow those people to interact directly with the Bitcoin network without having to rely on someone else's node. Each Bitcoin node has its own mempool, short for memory pool, where unconfirmed transactions sit. Unconfirmed just means they haven't been included in a block by a miner yet. They sit in the mempool and they're also relayed to other nodes so that they can eventually be picked up by a miner or mining pool and be included in a block. So these are the blocks that have already been mined. They contain a bunch of transactions. And then here are blocks that have yet to be mined. And here is uh, one version of the mempool. This is using mempool.spaces node. And we can see already there's a bunch of junk in the mempool. Now in 2025, Bitcoin core devs expect Bitcoin node runners to adjust their mempools so that they match whatever mining pools are currently including in blocks. As Gloria points out here, Gloria from Bitcoin core, one of the maintainers, when transactions are reliably mined in blocks, disallowing them in default relay policy, in other words, what uh, the policy for how nodes relay transactions and transactions to each other and they eventually end up in miners when transactions are reliably mined in blocks disallowing them in default relay policy only serves to harm mempool utility and block propagation is there currently a disconnect between what's in most node mempools and what's reliably ending up in blocks well then, according to Bitcoin Core devs like Gloria, it's clearly every node runner's job to bend over and accommodate the miners. Is there more inscription spam being mined? Then you as a good little node runner better be relaying inscriptions, according to Bitcoin Core devs. Do some crypto startups need more opportune space in Bitcoin? Then Bitcoin Core devs will just blow open the opportune filter and take away all user configurability so that node runners like you and me are forced to relay large opportunes for crypto startups. Now, for some reason in 2025, Bitcoin Core devs are always operating on the premise that's the job of the nodes to change what they're doing rather than the job of the miners to change what they're doing whenever there is a disconnect between the two. Now, why is this? Why the sudden change? Because until a few years ago, it was always the miners and corporations that were expected to defer to the node runners, not the other way around. That's how it worked during the Opportune War of 2014. That's how it worked during the block size wars of 2016 and 2017. But now in 2025, Bitcoin core devs are trotting out technical reasons, as you saw in Gloria's post there, technical reasons like mempool fee estimation and block propagation. They're trotting out technical reasons for why nodes need to defer to miners. But this is actually primarily a philosophical discussion, and it's one that Bitcoin core devs have been refusing to have, choosing instead to hide behind technicals and half-truths that are always presented out of context. If you're finding this video interesting so far, I'll just pause really briefly here to ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button, that does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. Now here's the question, do Bitcoin core devs ever take the time to extrapolate where their approach leads? Because if Bitcoin node runners are always expected to bend over for Bitcoin mining pools and relay whatever the pools want, what happens when those mining pools start including stuff in blocks that node runners really, really don't want to relay? In that kind of, in that kind of situation, will Bitcoin core devs still be expecting node runners to bend over backwards for the mining pools? What if, for example, a lot of CP starts ending up in blocks? Should node runners keep relaying that junk because otherwise, my fee estimation, my block propagation, if there are only about six mining pools in the world that matter and that are building block templates and that get to decide what goes into every block or most of the blocks that are mined in Bitcoin, if there are only about six mining pools doing this or maybe even less, and Bitcoin nodes are forced to relay the kind of things that those mining pools have been including in blocks, then that in itself is an attack vector. An attacker could keep feeding garbage to miners and Bitcoin Core will probably do nothing about it because quote unquote, it's reliably ending up in blocks. It's reliably, reliably being mined as Gloria says in that post. Now, is this a purely theoretical attack we're talking about here? No, it's actually what's been happening since 2023. Miners have decided that they want to put garbage in blocks like this and Bitcoin Core refuses to add a filter. This is the kind of stuff that's being posted on Bitcoin now, thanks to Bitcoin Core devs negligence. It's bad enough that Bitcoin Core devs chose not to add a filter for these kind of inscriptions and the spam over the past few years. It's very easy to do.
But what's really outrageous is that they're now actually deleting filters as Azure Hop here responds to Adam back. Uh, Adam asking, what do you guys claim is wrong with the next version of Bitcoin Core software? Azure responds, they are deleting features, not just changing default settings, not recommending a different co config, just straight up removing capabilities. Bitcoin Core teams feels that you're not responsible. You aren't responsible enough to configure your own mempool. Trust the B Core team. They'll do it for you now. Bitcoin Core has been acting like a bunch of technocrats who think they know it's better for the network than everyone else does, even when their guidance contradicts how Bitcoin has actually worked for the past decade. Bitcoin nodes have been filtering dust transactions and large op returns for many years, and yet somehow mempool fee estimation and block propagation has been fine. We've all survived. Before 2023, no one ever said that this kind of filtering was censorship. This is part of the gaslighting as well that's been happening over the past two years. Before 2023, no one ever said that filtering was censorship. Everyone understood the difference, the difference that refusing to mine, for example, OFAC sanctioned, US government sanctioned monetary transactions, that indeed is censorship. And yes, Mara, the mining pool did comply and bootlick for a while. They're always on the side, the wrong side of everything. So that's what censorship is. That's financial and monetary censorship. Filtering transactions is not censorship, especially when every individual node is doing it. In fact, every Bitcoin node has been filtering transactions for the past 16 years. And the Bitcoin network, as we said, has been working just fine. Now, this is the thing. Bitcoin core devs never offer a philosophical justification for why Bitcoin nodes suddenly need to stop doing what they've always been doing for 16 years. Forcing Bitcoin nodes to bend to the well of the miners and mining pools has never been how Bitcoin worked. Instead, Bitcoin nodes have always functioned as guardians of the Bitcoin network, stopping miners and large corporations from doing things that are just bad for Bitcoin. Bitcoin node runners tend to be low time preference, while the mining pools and corporations and startups are always high time preference, often doing things that undermine even their own long-term self-interest. As Justin Beckler says here, don't let Bitcoin core deceive you. Spam filters are not censorship. And then Eric B. Hodlin responds, relay controls, in other words, mempool policy, how nodes decide what transactions to send to each other and what not to. These sort of relay controls are not censorship because every individual choosing what to say, every individual node, for example, here choosing what to say, what to relay is not censorship. What is censorship? Removing relay controls in Bitcoin Core software is exactly censorship because censorship is a few individuals choosing what others, their users can say that gaslighting is pathetic. And when Adam Back says something like this, I don't know if this is an exact quote, I couldn't find it on Twitter or in this article, but he's being quoted as saying, you need to decide which is more important to you, censoring spam or having Bitcoin remain uncensorable. I know where I stand, says Adam Back. As ghost of unhosted Marcella says here, this is utter BS. Censorship resistance doesn't have anything to do with transaction relay policies. In other words, what the, the, the nodes are doing with their mempools. Somehow my little bubble of, of retard node runners understands Bitcoin censorship resistance while Adam back does not. And then unhosted goes on to uh, make a pretty good thread here. I wanted to just look at briefly. Let's turn this tweet into a thread to settle this matter once and for all. Censorship resistance refers to one's ability to use the protocol directly without intermediaries. What are the nodes that relay your unconfirmed transactions to the mining pool nodes, if not intermediaries? So would the spammers be quote unquote censored if Bitcoin Core didn't relay data carrying transactions by default? In other words, op return, I believe. No, because spammers can mine themselves whatever they want. They don't need permission to mine. At the same time, other node runners and other miners don't owe them anything. Speaking of which, how healthy is Bitcoin's current censorship resistance? Not in very good shape, actually. For 15 years, miners' only option to design their own blocks was lotto mining. And the importance of design your own blocks is it means you get to decide what transactions go into a block and what transactions don't go into a block. That's where the real censorship can take place. For 15 years, miners' only option to design their own blocks was lotto mining, which is unrealistic unless you run exahashes worth of hardware. What would improve Bitcoin censorship resistance that Adam seems concerned about here? A technology that allowed miners to build their own templates while still pooling rewards to reduce variance. This exists since 10 months ago. It's open source and it's called Datum. We've talked about it on this channel before. It's something that was put out. It's free and open source protocol from Ocean Mining. And all this means that every quote unquote monetary maxi who's been persuaded by the anti, the quote unquote anti-censorship argument has actually been psyoped by the attackers. Hashers must decide what goes into blocks and Bitcoin needs more mining nodes. Let attackers mine their own crap. 
In conclusion, number one, filtering transactions is not censorship. It's actually the complete opposite. It's allowing sovereign node runners control over their own mempools and relay policies. Number two, Bitcoin nodes come first. Bitcoin nodes come first, not miners, not VCs, not large corporations with big budgets, not crypto startups. Even if you happen to run the Bitcoin conference, you still come second to Bitcoin nodes. Bitcoin nodes come first. And if you don't understand these two premises, you should not, in my opinion, be allowed anywhere near Bitcoin Core. Bitcoin Core has been corrupted. The devs have been corrupted for the most part, it appears to me, or they just don't understand how Bitcoin works, which is almost even more embarrassing. This is why I'm running Bitcoin Knots instead, and I'll put a video, a link in the, in the description notes below so that you can see how to run a Bitcoin Knots node if you want to have sovereign control over your mempool and relay policies as well. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.